Welcome back! My name is Baller Scuba. This is Video Games Over Time. We are still in 1979, and today we're going to talk about adventure. Our story begins in 1977. Atari hired a young programmer named Warren Robinette in November. Robinette produced slot racers for Atari in 1978, a maze racing game for the Atari VCS. While finishing up slot racers, Warren Robinette was introduced to Colossal Cave Adventure through a friend. Robinette was inspired by the game and was determined to create a graphical version of the game. Robinette began programming the game in 1978, but quickly came across memory constraints when programming for the Atari VCS. Colossal Cave Adventure used hundreds of kilobytes of memory, but the Atari VCS only had 128 bytes of RAM available for the game. Robinette worked on finding ways around the limitations, despite some hindrance by his supervisor. By using a few tricks, including reducing the complexities of the sprites, reusing existing registers, and mirroring the walls in each room, Robinette was able to create a game with multiple rooms when most games only had one. Within a month, Robinette presented his first prototype of the game. Impressed with the work, Atari's management encouraged Robinette to complete the game. Robinette presented a second prototype with about eight rooms near the end of 1978, but found the game to be boring. After a brief hiatus, Robinette returned to the game with some ideas to make the game more exciting. Under the new management from Warner Communications and Ray Kasser, Atari's attitude towards its programmers had shifted. Atari had a policy to remove the programmers' names from their games in order to give the programmers less clout during negotiations and to discourage other companies from luring away Atari's programmers. Robinette was not happy with this change in policy, so he hid his name in a secret room in the game. This became one of the first known Easter eggs in a video game. Robinette, still unhappy with his treatment at Atari, left the company in 1979 after turning the game in, in June 1979. Adventure is, as the name suggests, an adventure game. The player's goal is to recover the enchanted chalice that an evil magician has stolen and return it to the Golden Castle. The game features two other castles with obstacles and mazes inside. The game features enemies in the form of three dragons and a bat. The player is represented by a small square that can travel between the game's 30 rooms. The game has three different difficulty settings. The easiest is an abridged version of the game. The second setting is the normal version of the game. The third setting is a randomized version of the normal version of the game. The game's release date is unclear. Warren Robinette claims that the game was released in time for Christmas in 1979, as do a few other sources. Atari first listed the game in its 1980 catalog, and the Sears releases show the copyright date as 1980. Regardless of when the game was released, it was a hit. The game did well among critics and the audience. Atari had another hit on their hands, even if Warren Robinette's name was not on the game itself. With the backstory of adventure now told, it's time to do something we have not done before. We're going to take a look at the manual for the game. The manual was written by Steve Harding, who had written most of the Atari VCS game manuals to that point. The manual provides a lot of backstory to the game that could not be found anywhere else. How to play. An evil magician has stolen the enchanted chalice and has hidden it somewhere in the kingdom. The object of the game is to rescue the enchanted chalice and place it inside the golden castle where it belongs. This is no easy task as the evil magician has created three dragons to hinder you in your quest for the golden chalice. There is Yorgle, the yellow dragon, who is just plain mean. There is Grundle, the green dragon, who is mean and ferocious. And there is Rindle, the red dragon, who is the most ferocious of all. Rindle is also the fastest dragon and is the most difficult to outmaneuver. There are three castles in the kingdom, the White Castle, the Black Castle, and the Golden Castle. Each castle has a gate over the entrance. The gate can be opened with the corresponding colored key. 
Inside each castle are rooms or dungeons, depending at which skill level you are playing. The castles are separated by rooms, pathways, and labyrinths. Common to all the skill levels is the blue labyrinth, through which you must find your way to the black castle. Skill levels 2 and 3 have a more complicated kingdom. See skill levels section. Good magic. While the evil magician has created many hazards to slow you in your quest to rescue the enchanted chalice, there is some good magic on your side. You have a sword that you can use to slay the dragons. To do this, you must touch him with it. If the right difficulty switch is in the A position, all dragons will run from the sword. There is a bridge that can be used to pass over the walls of any portion of the kingdom. The bridge cannot be used to pass through any barrier into the next portion nor can it be used to move from right to left or left to right over a barrier or wall. It also cannot be used to get past a locked castle gate. Pick up the bridge the same as you would any other object. Place the bridge across the wall that you wish to pass over and release it by pressing the red controller button. The ends of the bridge must be visible on both sides of the wall for it to work. After releasing the bridge, you can then pass through it to the other side of the wall or barrier. If you should happen to touch the inside of the bridge while you are passing over the barrier, the bridge will close, and you may become trapped in the wall. To release yourself, press the red controller button. If for some reason your magic should fail and you still cannot release yourself, press Game Reset and Reincarnate. Use Reincarnation as a last resort, especially if you have slain one or more dragons. In all games, Yorgul, the yellow dragon, is afraid of the gold key and will run from it. He will also stay away from whatever room or area of the kingdom in which it may be. To remove objects that are stuck in a wall and out of reach, there is a magnet that affects all inanimate objects, including the bridge. The magnet can also be used to move objects in an adjacent part of the kingdom by putting it in front of you before entering that part of the kingdom. The evil magician has cast a spell to make it difficult for you to succeed in rescuing the enchanted chalice. Not only do the dragons rally around and try to stop you from getting the enchanted chalice, they guard other objects in the kingdom. Grundle, the green dragon, guards the magnet, the bridge, and the black key. Rindle, the red dragon, guards the white key. When not guarding the enchanted chalice, Yorkel, the yellow dragon, roams freely about the kingdom. Sometimes he will assist Grundle or Rindle in guarding whatever it may be that they are guarding. There is other bad magic that you must overcome in order to rescue the enchanted chalice. You cannot pick up and carry a slain dragon. In skill levels 2 and 3, see skill level descriptions, besides the dragons, the evil magician has created a black bat that carries objects around throughout the kingdom and trades them for an object that you may be carrying. The black bat may trade a live dragon for the sword and leave you defenseless or it may trade you something for the enchanted chalice, just as you are ready to put it into the golden castle. Good or bad magic. Some magic may be good or bad, depending on the situation. You can catch the black bat and carry it in whatever the black bat may be carrying. However, sometimes the black bat will escape, usually at the most inopportune times. If there are four or more objects, including the castle gates, in your area of the kingdom, your magic may or may not work. Sometimes you can slay a dragon, sometimes you can't. However, it is easier to avoid being swallowed by a dragon. If you have slain a dragon and he is blocking your path so you cannot get through, you can use this to your advantage by placing one or two objects in the same area and then move through the slain dragon. Sometimes the black bat can be used to your advantage by getting it to swap for an object you need that may be stuck in a wall. Skill Levels Level 1 This is the simplest skill level. When you depress the game reset switch to begin play, you will see the key to the golden castle. Unlock the castle and enter. You will find the sword inside the golden castle. The key to the black castle is being guarded by Grundle, the green dragon. Yorgul, the yellow dragon, is roaming free and may or may not be found guarding the enchanted chalice, which is hidden with the magnet inside the black castle. Level 2. 
This kingdom is much larger than level 1. There are catacombs in which you can only see part way. The key to the golden castle is hidden here. You must pass through the catacombs to reach the white castle. The key to the white castle is hidden in the blue labyrinth. Inside the white castle is the red dungeon. There is a secret room in the red dungeon where the key to the black castle is hidden. To get to the secret room, you must use the bridge. To get to the black castle, you must pass through the blue labyrinth. Behind the first room of the black castle is the gray dungeon, which is similar to the catacombs. The enchanted chalice is hidden here, guarded by Rindle, the red dragon. All objects, the dragons, and the black bat will start in the same place in the kingdom each time you play the game at level 2. Level 3. The kingdom is the same as level 2, but is more difficult to play as the evil magician has placed all the objects and the dragons randomly within the kingdom. You will never know for sure what is in the next area of the kingdom until you enter it, nor will you know for sure where the enchanted chalice may be hidden. The dragons could be inside any of the castles. With all that done, it's time to play adventure for ourselves. And here we are in adventure. Now we've talked a lot about this game. I might have hyped it up a little bit too much, but we will test the waters here on adventure one. Uh, this is the abridged version of the game. So we're going to get started and here is our intrepid hero, this square. Um, yeah. All right, let's get the key right there as they told us in the manual. Just head inside and boom, there it is. So we'll drop this and we will pick up this. All right, now we have ourselves the sword. Um, I'm not sure which one's the pointy end. It doesn't really matter. And technically, I guess that side's the pointy end. All right, so we need to head down and to the right and down again. And there is the dragon. All right, so he's on this side. So, there! Ta-da! I have killed the dragon. <laughs> um, I will still need this, actually. Let's put it on this side now. There we go. We'll just carry it along like this, and boom, there's the other dragon. <laughs> we don't need the sword anymore. There's only the two dragons in this version of the game. Um, but we will grab the key. And we will move on. Hooray! We've killed the dragons. We are ready to go. Uh, so... Here is the blue labyrinth that they were talking about. Uh, this time we want to head right and down. And then up and around, across the bridge, and up to the black castle. There's the magnet. There's the chalice. We'll grab the chalice. And we'll just backtrack. Pretty, pretty simple. We got ourselves the chalice <laughs> and we have made it back to the gold castle. And that's the abridged version of the game. We have won. Hooray, we did it. Uh, of course, there is a larger adventure to come. Back on the difficulty setting screen here, we're going to change it to two. Um, I should talk a little bit about the three difficulty settings and how Atari advertises them. Uh, there are three difficulty settings to the game, obviously. We've talked about it a couple times already. Um, Atari advertises each difficulty as a game. So when you look at the adventure cartridge, it says there are three games on the cartridge. Uh, they're talking about the three difficulty settings of adventure. Um, as a result, I would consider um, difficulty level number one a tutorial, but they advertise it as its own game. Uh, the, the level one is so easy that it barely qualifies as a game. I think it's a tutorial, uh, just to kind of familiarize yourself with the controls. Uh, Adventure 2, difficulty setting number two, is the actual game. Uh, we're not going to do difficulty setting number three uh, because the randomization of where objects are placed is so great that there's a significant chance that I won't actually be able to beat level three. It will be impossible for that to happen based on where they put the treasures. Uh, it could also be so ridiculously easy that it's easier than level one. It's so random that anything is possible. As a result, I'm going to 
ignore it. And we're just going to do uh, difficulty setting number two, which is the actual game. Uh, now, if I can get something set up properly in this at the beginning, this will be very easy. If I don't, it'll be frustrating. So let's start. And uh, we have the black bat flying around. It's got the sword. Uh, we're going to need that. So let's grab the black bat if we can. You just kind of run into him. Thank you. He flew through me the first time. All right. We're going to use the bat and we're going to try to deal with the dragon here. You might notice this is a cave now. These, these are, I believe, the catacombs. No, the gray dungeon, I think they called it. Uh, we're going to take the bat and go into the bottom left corner here. Circle around, and there is the dragon, and we have killed him. All right, so let's head back up and um, go back to the first screen. Right out the top here is the exit. We're going to go down uh, this path here, the leftmost down one in the center, kind of. Um, and we're going to try to swap the bat's item with... Uh, we're we're going to try to get that key... All right, well, he's got the key. I've got the sword. Um, let's get the sword and, and drop it here. But we need that bat. Um, so, there. oh, I ran into him. Come on. All right, so he's flying around. Let's see if I can grab him here. This is not super helpful. All right, maybe I, if I just hang out here. All right, I got him. I got him. So with the golden key and the black bat, there is a trick here. You can drop him in the golden castle. And if he flies straight left or right, I think I've done it. Oh, he's flying. Okay, so I think I think we have him trapped there. Yes. Okay, so we have him trapped in the castle. He will not leave the castle. That's a little trick. Uh, sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes he flies uh, kind of diagonally down into the right. And if he does that, he can get out. Otherwise, he should be trapped in there for a good amount of time. Okay, um, where am I going to need this? Um, let's just leave it here, actually. Uh, we're not going to need the sword for a little bit. Um, let's head... Um, yeah, we're, we're going to head through the uh, blue maze at this point. Um we're going to go through the left side and then kind of zigzag our way up to the top. And then from the top, uh, take the exit to the right. And here we can find the white key. All right. Let's take the white key, circle back around. Yeah, the blue labyrinth has changed a little bit, um, primarily because the, the bridge is not there. Um, but we've made it through. It's not too complicated once you know the pattern. All right, so we need to go to the White Castle, which I believe is uh, down and to the left here. Circle around. No, I went the wrong way, but I'll show off over here anyway. Um, to the right here is uh, nothing, but if you're in difficulty setting number three, I mean, anything could be there, like the golden chalice could be there. Okay, I don't need the bridge right now. Um, I will need that later. Okay, so... Went the wrong way. Um, up through here. Okay, so we want to go um, down into the right corner. Circle around and then out to the left. Um, down from here is the magnet. I hopefully won't need that. Um, and then up here is the white castle. We're going to open the, the gate, but not go inside. We're also going to drop the... Oh, you know what? I probably need that. Uh, for the Easter egg. You don't need it for anything else. Once you open the gate, you're done. Um, but I'll probably need that for the uh, for the Easter egg here. Um, we'll drop it here. That's a good spot for it. All right, let's grab the sword. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to get back to the White Castle. And we're going to try to clear out the White Castle a bit. Let's head inside. Right off the bat, huh? And I've died. All right, so let's reincarnate. Like, they trapped me. He came from nowhere. Reincarnate. Um, the problem is that everything's going to be back alive. All the dragons are alive when you reincarnate. So let's try to get out of here. Uh, go! I'm hitting up and he's not going. Okay, there's the sword. Um, let's take the sword, drop down, and kill the dragon. All right, there's one. There was another one over here. 
Two dragons down. All right, we've we've recovered, I guess I should say. Um, yeah. Um, I believe the Black Bat will still be stuck through reincarnations, but that's about it. All right, we'll take the sword out there. Um, what we need at this point is the bridge. So let's grab the bridge and head um, to... Yes, I, I do need the bridge for this. Um, we're going to need it in like, like that. Okay. And we're going to drop it right here. And then I can pass through. Hooray! They did tell us that we were going to need that. Uh, down through the middle here, we can find the black key. Let's take that out of here. And drop it. Yeah, uh, sometimes the game kind of screws you over with the deaths. I felt like I got screwed over. I probably could have survived, but once once the biting started happening, I was kind of screwed. Um, drop the bridge and take the black key for now. And once again, we're just kind of moving stuff around. Uh, similar to Colossal Cave Adventure, right? We'll put the black key there. We'll go back and get the bridge. Um, you don't necessarily need the bridge for... Ah, run the wrong way again. You don't need the bridge for uh, just completing the game, but I'm going to need the bridge in order to get the Easter egg unlocked. And I'll show you guys the difference. Um, and it'll, be, it'll be pretty clear. I've only gotten the Easter egg once, so I'm kind of hoping for the best on that. Um, let's bring the, uh, the black key first. And we'll go through the blue maze again. Once again, left, zigzag your way up, then to the right. All right, this is where we got the white key, right? But this is also the way to the black castle. Let's put that up there. Okay, just up a couple screens. And then, boom, black castle. Okay, um, let's take this key back. Once again, we're going to need this for the Easter egg. Um, if you're just trying to complete the game, you only need it to unlock the black castle, then you're done. Notice that I didn't go in again. That's because there's another dragon in there. And if you go inside, so you can trigger them and they can come back out and kill you. All right, so the first thing I'm probably going to need is the sword. Let's take the sword over. There's a lot of moving stuff around in this game. But we are getting through it. Things are going well. Since I got rid of the black bat, things got a lot easier. Otherwise, you, you know, you don't know where your stuff is. Sometimes the black bat will go take it and take it somewhere else and fly around with it. So dealing with the black bat by getting him trapped in the golden castle is what I would recommend. Okay, so he's not here. So let's put it down into the, uh, the right. So we'll go left here. I believe that means he's in here. Yep, there he is. All right, I got him. Uh, I heard that he died. The golden chalice is in there as well. Okay, so we're technically done with the sword as long as I don't die. Which I shouldn't because there's nothing left to kill me. <laughs> all right, so let's go all the way back out with the, so with the sword here. Uh, because I still need the object. Otherwise, I could just drop it anywhere. We're, we're done with it. But um, I do need objects at this point. Um, I think I have enough, but... Um, We'll do what we can. We're going to take the bridge. The bridge is not necessary for completing um, the game at this point. You only need it in the white castle, but I'm going to take it to the black castle for the secret, right? For the Easter egg. The Easter egg's a little difficult to get, uh, but we will get it. I've only gotten it once. It's difficult, like I said, but uh, we will we'll do what we can. All right. Um, yeah, let's let's just do this first, and then I'll get the golden... Um, the golden chalice. All right, so you kind of want to go here um, in, on this screen. Unfortunately, I can't seem to get into the right position for it. What is that over there? Um, okay, so here, no, this is the first screen again. Uh, I remember going this way. And let's drop it here and then head down. Okay. Are you, I'm not hearing anything. All right. So, yeah, basically there's a small little room down here. So th this is a, a good spot for me. So if I drop it here 
and I kind of move around, I should be able to find something here. Yeah, it's difficult. Like I said, I've only done it once and you can't really see down there, but there is a one by one pixel that I should be able to hear that I've picked up. And I can't hit up, otherwise I go back to the screen that I'm on. Like you're not supposed to really be here. Yeah, I don't have it. Where is it? See, I got it on the other side before. It's, it's technically invisible because it's the same color as the floor. Let's try going this way and we'll go down this side. We'll drag this down a bit. Actually, can I, can I move that and then here? No, this is not what I'm looking for. Come on, pick this up. I don't think I'm in the right room anymore. I'm not. Yeah, this is the room. You can tell because it flickers. And it flickers because something's here. That's the idea. All right, put it there. Then I can head down. Oh, there we go. I picked it up. I picked it up. There you can see it. Okay. So it wasn't exactly where I thought it was, but it is obtained now. Um, let's get out of here. With this, I don't want to pick up the golden chalice because I'll never be able to find this thing again. Um, let yeah, this one little dot here. And how do I get out from here? There we go. Okay, so I have it with me. There you can see it. And let's try to deal with this secret, this Easter egg, this hard thing to find. All right, an Easter egg, uh, since this is the first time we're, we're technically talking about it, an Easter egg is something that the developers usually hide in a game on purpose, sometimes on accident. Um, that's kind of a, a small little bonus thing. All right, so you can kind of see the gray dot right there, right? So we're going to drop it in this room. This is the room for it. There it's dropped. Let's grab a couple keys here. And we'll put it here. Is that enough? That is enough. All right. And there we go. Created by Warren Robinette. Um, you can see going up here kind of just takes me back to a, a crazy page that kind of looks like the blue labyrinth. But there you go. That is the Easter egg. Um, I was told you needed two objects um, as well as the small little dot in order to get this to generate. But I did it with one. So there you go. Okay. So now we have done everything we can in the game except, you know, win. So let's do that. Let's go back through the blue labyrinth. All right, zigzag up to the top and out to the right. Let's get the enchanted chalice and go, right? That, that is everything. It's a difficult Easter egg uh, to find. I'm not sure who found it. Um, I did look up the story to it once and um, yeah, it didn't make a lot of sense to me. All right, there we go. Back on this screen. Kind of need to circle around here. And there we go. Enchanted Chalice is ours. So let's take it. I don't know what this is. Like, that's just garbage. That's that's not that's not part of the game. I, I did have to crack up when I was going through the manual as that so much of their instructions were how to get around bugs. Like, you know, the, the magic sometimes doesn't work if there's too many things on the screen. Like, oh, okay. Um, that kind of thing. It, like, the game is designed around working around limitations at the end of it, and I think it does a good job. But, let's celebrate our victory! <laughs> and we've won! And that is adventure! I hope you guys have enjoyed it. With the game now played, let's talk about how the game plays today. As you might expect, I would not recommend playing adventure today. It's fun for a few minutes if you're interested in, you know, gaming history, but otherwise it's not necessarily 
a good adventure game by today's standards. Uh, a lot of that has to do with the limitations of the Atari VCS at the time. Obviously, uh, the bugs, the graphical glitches, uh, the fact that your character is just a small little block. Um, technically, I believe a 4x4 four four pixel block um, that is your your hero. Uh, the dragons, of course, don't look like dragons to me. They look like ducks. They've always looked like ducks to me, but um, it's almost like a Rorschach uh, test that the ink blot tests that you kind of see what you want in those dragons, but rarely does anybody see a dragon. Um, I see ducks. Um, you could also see a rabbit, like depending, but the mouth to me looks like a duck mouth. Um, the game's pretty basic. It's very short, right? For me to be able to go through an adventure game and a hundred percent complete it in the amount of time that I did basically a single sitting. Um, it means that the game's short. Uh, so if you're interested in gaming history, if you're interested in where adventure games started, adventure is fun for a little bit, but otherwise I can't say that I recommend it. Uh, the sound I feel is pretty lacking. Um, you start learning what the jingles mean and all that kind of stuff, but ultimately, um, there not being any background music and they're uh, just kind of being these random sounds for picking things up, dropping things, and for killing an enemy or dying to the dragons. Um, it's not um, all that... It's not all that representative of what actually is happening. Um, so you just kind of learn what the jingles mean, but they're not necessarily... Um, yeah, they're just not necessarily good sounds for what they're trying to represent. And once again, that has a lot to do with the, the hardware of the time. Um, he's definitely limited by the, the, the Atari VCS, and that's always been the issue. Um, of course, I want the game to be bigger. I want it to be more detailed. I think that there is something here, but, you know, the, the story is lacking. Basically, there's an enchanted chalice out there. Go get it. Like, who took it? I don't know, an evil magician or something? Um, that's how it feels to me when I, when I read the story. Um, but with that said, we have a game with a story. There, there is something there. And that's something that we haven't experienced too much of. Um, it's hard not to compare this to Colossal Cave Adventure, the game that, ex that inspired this adventure game. Um, I would say that a Colossal Cave Adventure is far superior. It's not even close. That Colossal Cave Adventure, even without graphics, um, is a far better game than this. At least for me personally. I don't mind text adventure games. I don't necessarily need graphics. So for there to be graphics and then for to have so much of the game taken away, so much of the the exploration, the beauty of the game kind of taken away to, I believe, in total 30 rooms... Um, it does feel like you're missing something. Um, in terms of replayability, I would say it's low. Uh, even though there's a random um, a random dungeon generator, more or less, uh, where they move all the objects around, all the enemies around, um, I have no interest in going through and, and doing that. It's not something that appeals to me at all. Um, I want to go through the game and know that I'm going to be able to beat it when I boot it up. Uh, so um, number three is nothing for me. And then doing number two again doesn't seem like all that fun because now I know where to go and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, that, that is adventure. That's kind of my modern take on it. Um, it, it's not good anymore. It has not aged well at all in my mind. Uh, so that's how I have to look at it now, uh, from today's standpoint, can't say I recommend it one bit at the time. Adventure went on to sell more than 1 million copies for the Atari VCS. It defined what became the action-adventure genre. It was the first fantasy game designed for a console. The game gave the players an open world to explore with multiple on-screen items to use. This had never been seen in a graphics-based game. It is no wonder that this popular game would prove to be influential on the video game industry. And that is Adventure. As is to be expected, we will continue talking about Atari as we continue these videos. As for Warren Robinette, even though he left Atari before Adventure was released, 
we will hear from him again as well. My name is Baller Scuba. This has been Video Games Over Time. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in our next video where we'll talk about some other releases of 1979.